guys, thanks for coming along tonight. Um, Roger, David, David, um, thank you for having us on, a, on an off night, on not on a, a normal Thursday drop-in. I appreciate that. Um, part of the reason we did that, um, we've got a new little baby camera coming out very, very soon. Um, and Don McAlpine's off to India in a couple, oh, next, next week. Um, so this was our opportunity to grab Don and do all this and get you guys all together. So thank you very much for coming. Um, we've had a really busy year. Um, with not, on, not only with, with Vericam, um, but releasing the, the new Little Eva one. We'll talk about that. Um, so tonight I just want to touch on the, on the range, um, what we've been up to over the last 18 months or so. Um, it's about a year since we were last here. Last time we were here, we were launching the LT. Um, so a little over a year ago that, that came out. That's when we were last here. Um, We've done an awful lot in that time. So again, thank you for coming. Um, if you've got any questions, just sing out and that goes um, when sort of Don and Sasha are talking. If you've got any questions, just sing out. Um, we've got some experts here tonight. Um, one in particular, um, my good friend, Taka Matsui. Um, <clears throat> Parker is our chief engineer, lead design engineer. He's, he's got a very long title on his, on his business card, but essentially um, our, our cinema camera product range is, is his baby. And Tarker will tell you a little bit about his history um, in a yeah, 15 minutes or so's time. We've got some video to show you as well, so we've got some clips. Um, Don's very kindly organised with the producers of Ali's Wedding for some couple of clips, and we've got some clips from Sasha Haddon's motion picture that's currently filming at the moment, Lieber. So we've got some, yeah, some good real-world examples of some footage to show you tonight. Looking at our lineup, we only go back to 2014, so we haven't been in this space for long. And I'm pretty proud, and we're, we're all pretty proud of what we've achieved in the last three years. It's a, it's a pretty short space of time. We've really got to go back 10 years, sort of back to the early 2000s before the first fairy cam came out. So we, we pioneered this whole market. We pioneered this whole cinematic motion picture in an electronic camera era well over 10 years ago and we yeah there was some time in the wilderness but we sort of come back in force back in October 2014. Looking at the Vericam range we've been very busy in the last 12 months so the Vericam 35 is now about three years old it really took us 18 months to get any real runs on the board and there was a lot of reasons for that we've missed the first pilot season in the US that put us probably 12 months out of whack um, with doing anything major in the US. And like anything, especially at the top end, and Panasonic's always sort of tried to penetrate the top end and then sort of come down to the bottom. When you do start at that top end, it's obviously a lot harder to get acceptance and it's something new. And if, it's, if you're chasing the high end, it's not the easiest point to start. So we, we're not shying away from attacking that high end. So look, we're pretty wrapped with what we've done around the world in terms of features and series. Probably three quarters of these have been done in the last 12 months or released in the last 12 months or so. Good acceptance by sort of all the distributors, all the, all the major channels. Netflix really helped us cement the Vericam 35 into the, into the industry marketplace when they said, when they mandated their whole 4K thing. I'm not going to debate the, the, uh, the rights and wrongs of that, but that really made a lot of people look at a Vericam who are quite happy with shooting on what they've been shooting at for a long, long time. So thanks to our friends at Netflix, that's given us some real legs. They've really given us some runs on the board. Just touch on a couple of projects we've been involved with locally. Marty McGrath shot Dance Academy. Jeffrey Walker was director. He was also director on Ali's Wedding with Don. And sort of talked to Marty about the very cam and absolutely loved it. We're going to get some quotes and a bit more information and Marty was going to say g'day tonight, but he's overseas at the moment in Africa. Dance Academy had a, a reasonable run at the, at the theatres in terms of a motion picture release. Took a lot of use of the ISO 5000 as well as the 800. He was yeah, very, very happy with the 35. Don and Ali's wedding and Don sort of talked a lot about Ali's wedding about a year ago when we were last here. This time we'll show you some pictures and talk in a little bit more depth to some pictures. That's really just wrapped up its sort of cinema release in the last couple of weeks. Barbecue is a, a feature we were involved in, shot by David Richardson. This comes 
comes out in January for its release, and this this will this will be a good one because you, you can see some of the cast with Shane Jacobs and Magna Zabanski and Manu, and it's it's got a fantastic cast. It's a really good fun story. It'll it'll be a, a, a real feel good one. So keep an eye out for that. And that was shot with the 35 as the A camera and the LT was the B. Our very own friend Cotton Pilipides up the back was um, B camera operator and advisor to. Uh, to this production and they had a, had a ball and there was a couple of quite challenging night scenes and things like that where they took full advantage of the ISO 5000. Judd Overton's sort of been doing a bit of work for us on, on 35s and LT, the, the letdown which is screening at the moment on Netflix. Yeah, ABC and Netflix and Agatha is a short he just recently shot. Remembering Agatha. Remembering Agatha, okay. Thank you. I bring up sort of John Christian Rosenald. He shot King's Choice. It wasn't shot entirely on the very cam. It was selected for a lot of its night scenes. But just recently we had, yeah, two features that were shot on the 35 and the LT, plus part of King's Choice, all at the cinemas at the same time. So we're pretty happy about that. We had a, a good run at the cinemas there for a little while. With more to come. I bring up Bill Wages. Um, Bill Wages has been a good friend since the very, very early days of the Vericam out of the US. I bring up Bill and, and what he's shot on the Vericams because this is one of, one of my favourite Vericam quotes. What you can't see is what you get. And it's, it's, it's very true and that, that's come back from, from every DOP, anyone that's had anything to do with the Vericam. And uh, look, the 5000 is not just a great feature to use in low light, there's so much more you can do with that and I'm sure sort of Don will talk a little bit more about that as well. It, it's just a part of the, of the magic that makes the Vericam. Grant Dodwell is a name some of you will remember. Grant's got a company called Australian National Theatre Live and they've, they've probably done at least half a, half a dozen odd productions. So they'll set up quite major setups. This one was sort of down at the Malthouse Theatre in Melbourne. It was a six camera shoot, kind of correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, so again, some of these shots were really, really challenging. You can see the sort of lighting effects that were going on. There was a lot of whites and a lot of blacks and things like that. To be able to shoot something like this at 5,000, to close the iris down, to give you that depth of field, just couldn't have been shot on any other camera. To to give you the same effect. So the idea is here, Grant's team yeah, shoots a play and then talks to some of the independent cinemas, in the, especially in the regional areas, to take these plays out to the public who can't get into Sydney or Melbourne to see them. Shooting last night, we're on set with Don and Sasha on Libra, and again Sasha and Don will talk a little bit about that. This is a good one because it's the first project we've locally been involved in which we've actually shot on the Hewer. So using Codex RAW, not using the compressed AVC intra formats, but using the Codex RAW system. It's a great example what you can do with RAW and that RAW is not this devil to be feared in terms of managing data and, and huge data rates. It can be done and Don and Sasha have proved that it can be done on really literally the smell of an oily rag. It is a no budget production and yeah, I really want the guys to sort of talk about that just to say look, it can be done. It's, it's possible to do it without it yeah, taking over the whole thing and blowing the budget out completely. A little bit about the, the lineup. So the 35 was our first release a little over two years ago. We followed that up with the LT. The LT is just a really a baby brother to the 35. Then we've got the Pure, which is just <laughs> A raw recorder. The common thread running between all those cameras, they produce the same image. They, they have the same image sensor. Uh, they've all got the dual native ISO of 800 and 5000. They all have exactly the same look. So provided you pick a common codec between the cameras or you take a raw output, the pictures on all three cameras will be absolutely identical. No difference whatsoever. Features and functions, we can go to higher frame rates, we can go to 120, compressed and raw. On the LT we only go to 60. But again, you can go above that going out to external recorders. So that's our lineup. The 35, as I said, this is where it all started. This is where we tried to, I guess, recapture what we had over a decade ago with the very cam. Not just that ability to over crank and under crank, but a certain look we had from this camera that everyone fell in love with. So Tarka and the team really tried to recreate what we had, the feeling and the spirit of that original very cam, basically in this sensor. And the thing with the sensor, unlike a lot of our competitors, we make our own sensors. This sensor was made by Panasonic. The sensor in the EVA1 was made by Panasonic. When you get to make your own sensor, you get to put a whole lot of creative decisions in there. You get to tweak it, you get to, it is exactly what you want. And that's a real luxury, having a yeah, factory that produces sensors that go into great cameras.
So, 444 recording, we don't have 44 recording on the LT. You only get that internally on the Vericam 35. That's probably the biggest point of difference going to the 35 over the LT. Dual native ISO, keep banging on about that. We have two ASAs in the camera, 800 and 5000, and that's the difference. They're actual screen grabs, and the difference is two and two thirds stops, and the difference is one sixth the lights. That's how much of a dramatic difference there is between 800 and 5000. Now, this is only happening, when we're switching between 800 and 5000, it's only happening on the analog circuitry in the camera, so there's no gain in there. So we're not adding any noise per se because of this process. There is a slight noise floor difference. It's less than one dB of noise between 800 and 5000. So we're not saying they are identical, they're almost identical. Less than one dB is a tiny, tiny little bit of noise to be gaining to get that two and two thirds stops. So now, instead of shooting day for night, we have what we call Vericam night, where you're shooting night at night. The use of sort of practicals comes in, sort of torches and the moon and things like that. We're not saying going to a 5000 base that you will not need lights. Of course, you'll always need lights. Now, you just get to be a little bit more selective and you don't have to bring in the big guys to light up a whole scene. You can have a lot more fun with practicals and things like that that you haven't been able to use before. And look, a lot of insights which came from when Don shot Ali's wedding. Just the difference in actors' faces, their pupils and things like that. The comfort level of people sitting in a room, eating food and things like that. Not being bombarded with light. So if you've got a set designer that's sort of, yep, they've done their work and you walk in and you, yep, that looks good, I want to shoot that. You don't have to light it. What you see is what you get. If that's, you're happy with that, you don't have to add to get that. You're not taking anything away by using a 5000 setting. This is a grab out of King's Choice and this was sort of one of the reasons they sort of chose the Vericam for working at night. There's one 100k light behind that tree over there. So that's the only light lighting that whole scene. That's correct, Tucker? Just that, that one light. So what the flexibility that now sort of gives them, if they wanted to, they've now got a 360 degree area of that set, of that shot that they can shoot on because there's no cables, there's no lights, there's no lighting stands. Having that flexibility to shoot with moonlight and that single light is quite unique. There's no other camera that can do that. And after two years, there's still no one who's sort of saying, yep, we're working on this dual ISO thing, we're gonna have it soon. It's still a feature that we have exclusively, thanks to Taka's good friends at the uh, sensor factory. As said before, in terms of the difference between 800 and 5,000, the difference is all happening on the analog side. So on this side of the line, there are no amplifiers. There's no digital gain. That happens after we switch between 800 and 5,000. So in here, you have a single pixel going into an analog circuit, which is capacitors, and the base ASA is determined by the size of voltage in the charge held in those capacitors. So here we're just running a separate circuit with different size capacitors holding different charges and different voltages. So when you switch on the camera, and we can show you later, between 800 and 5000, you're just switching essentially between two different lots of capacitors. That's all it's doing. It is the same as having two film stocks in your camera. Changing one out, putting the other one in. There really is no mystery to it other than how we do it and only getting that difference of noise floor less than one dB. That's the mystery and that's the really clever science. Okay, so <clears throat> as any other camera, you, you start off on your 800 base and you can ISO up and down from there. And obviously, as you ISO down, you get less noise, you also lose a bit of dynamic range. Similarly from the 5000 base, so if we gain up from 800 to 4000 off the 4000 base, that's going to be a useless noisy shot. But if we gain down from 5000 to 4000, we lose even more noise. We get to shoot at our 4000, so we have less noise. Actually, shooting at 4000 will give you less noise than shooting at 800. Even shooting at two and a half, and I think that's the next example. So that, that was shot at two and a half. So the difference, Oh well, yeah, so shooting at two and a half from a 5,000 base. Instantly, yeah, you've, you've dropped the noise by 6 dB. And the difference in terms of dynamic range from 5,000 to two and a half is only one dB. So we've got 14 plus stops in that camera. So coming down to two and a half, we come down to 13 plus stops. 
So yes, there is a compromise in your, in your dynamic range, but 1 dB is not a significant compromise to be able to shoot sort of pretty much noise-free shots at two and a half like that. Another feature we sort of pioneered and pushed really hard in the, in the Vericam is multiple recordings. So we have our, our main, our neg, our master, our sort of anamorphic shot with the log and no look. And then we have a LUT applied to, I guess, our daily, if you like, 709, recorded on a micro P2 card. And then we can also have a proxy as well. So we've got a lot of flexibility in terms of how we record. So on the 35, we've got three recordings on the LT. We've got two. The LT, as I said, little baby brother to the 35. Same sensor. It's a totally differently configured camera. It's a lot more versatile, it's a lot smaller, it's a lot lighter. It doesn't have the full range of features that the 35 has, but it has the same sense, it has the same look. It's a camera more designed for drama and off the shoulder shooting, docos and things like that with the handle and the ability to sort of put B4 glass. And that's a huge plus if you want to run B4 glass. If you've got two 30 inch glass that you want that long zoom, you'll always have an adapter to drop from 35 to B4 and that will always drop a couple of stops in that piece of glass. You can get two and two thirds stops back between 800 and 5000. So in terms of shooting with B4 lenses, that's probably the most versatile camera to do it on because you've got the ability to make up for the light you've lost with the adapter on the 5000 base ASA. External recording for RAW on the 35, we need a codex solution to shoot RAW. On the LT, we can do it on a $1,500 Inferno or a $1,500 sort of $2,000 7Q. Our good friends at Atomos have recently added 10-bit RAW 2K up to 240 frames a second and also 10-bit RAW 100, 120 to cinema DNG. So that that is a an incredible powerful recording suite in a $1,500 recorder. Between the LT and the Inferno itself is just two 3G SDI, so it's just a 6G SDI link between the camera, two times 3G SDI. And that will give you all those formats. Those guys are brilliant. And that RAW that you're recording on there is exactly the same RAW as you're recording on the Vericam Pure. There is no difference to the signal. Their workflow, their reliability, you're paying for that, it's bulletproof. That's the platinum standard with Codex. No one can touch those guys at that level. But, I mean, that recorder is more than the camera itself. It's a high-end package, very, very high-end package, the Vericam Pure. So we have the same camera head. We've given Codex all the necessary, I guess, processing circuitry from our recorder and they've now incorporated that into their raw recorder. So in the past, we had to run the codex recorder on the back of our recorder, so it made for a really, really long, really, really cumbersome solution. Having the codex recorder docking straight to the camera gives us a lot more compacter solution. We've got a lot of sort of pushback from the industry when we put the raw recorder onto the 35 with the recorder, it, was, it wasn't accepted well. This has been accepted incredibly well. And Don will have the pleasure, he mentioned before heading over to India, he will have the pleasure of shooting on three of these in only a couple of weeks' time. Yeah. There's the difference in size. So raw recorder on our recorder, raw recorder without our recorder. Simple as that. A couple of kilos difference and, and quite a significant difference too. And as I said, the plus with Codex in terms of workflow, in terms of their drive reliability and things like that, they are unmatched at the high end of the film market. No one can touch them. You do pay a premium for that. We can give you that high end RAW or we can give you an inexpensive RAW in the LT and an Odyssey or a, a um, Inferno.